Scout Motors has debuted their Traveler and Terra concepts here this week, and these are production intent concepts, so very close to the production vehicles, hopefully, and they are fantastic looking. And in this video, I'm going to show you an up-close, in-depth look at the exterior, the interior, go over the specs that we know so far, and all of the pricing and availability we know so far as well. So as far as the styling on these things, it is so, so cool. And uh, I mean, I love the design direction they took with these. I love the script badging there in the front. Uh, kind of unique, you know, not as bold as some of the other competitors out there. But I mean, I love the kind of squared off lights and, you know, has that retro vibe to it um, without going overboard, I don't think. And kind of makes it look very futuristic as well. Here is the Terra, the truck version which has a five and a half foot bed. I'll go over all the specs here, but the lighting in the back, very, very cool. It has this ghost lighting, they call it here, with the LEDs, and you can see it, especially here on the truck, not being in the direct sun, but uh, very cool look. But then check out the Traveler here has the 35s. Uh, again, I'll cover all the uh, mechanical specs because we actually have a good bit of info on these so far. But uh, very cool the way that opens up. I'll show you in a second. But I think the thing that was the most impressive right off the bat is the powertrain choices. We had previously thought that Scout was just going to be all electric and there still is a fully electric version. It'll do up to 350 miles of range. But there's also going to be a range extender EV as well, which uses a small gas engine to give you up to 500 miles of range. And uh, so a nice thing they're able to kind of you know accommodate what the market's doing right now and provide that alternative option for those who might not be ready to make the switch to complete EV just yet and this one has that that's called the harvester uh, powertrain you'll be able to get in these uh, for the range extender but um, a little built-in step there and some really cool paint colors here too really love um, so anyway the other impressive thing is the pricing I'm gonna say it right off the bat before we get into all the other mechanical stuff so as far as pricing goes these are going to be starting for both of these under $60,000, which honestly is a lot less than I was expecting. And with incentives, hopefully there'll be, you know, some tax incentives. Uh, they say would actually get the Traveler down to 50,000 to start and the Terra here to just $51,500. So really, again, uh, a lot lower. Obviously these ones we're looking at here fully spec'd up, probably a little bit more than that. But you know, as far as just the starting price, it's very impressive. So getting into some of the mechanical details of these. So they're both on an all new body on frame chassis. They have solid rear axles, front and rear mechanical lockers, and also front sway bar disconnect. So very legit off-roading gear in addition to these 35 inch tires you can get on these. Um, and just, you know, all kind of the, the stuff you want to hear if you're an off-roader, you know, lots of impressive equipment there. And uh, they say that with, you know, the maximum, you know, set up with the 35s and stuff, you'll have over one feet of ground clearance. So a foot of ground clearance or over that, um, very impressive. Nearly three feet of water fording capability, they say. And they also say that uh, it's targeted to climb 100% grades and also have competitive approach and departure angles and uh, so you can see the solid solid axles there and uh, I mean all sounds very impressive here they also say they're projected to tow over 7,000 pounds for the Traveler here and uh, over 10,000 pounds for the Terra with both having a nearly uh, 2,000 pound payload capacity as well and uh, you see the bed there um, has a good amount of space you know five and a half foot bed nicely optimized you got the various tie downs there you could also have um two uh 120 volt outlets as well as a one uh 240 volt outlet as well and for both of these you know as far as uh, off-roading and overlanding and all that stuff there's also going to be various accessories available for all of these um so you can custom tailor it exactly how you want it and a lot of those accessories also can be even uh controlled via an app they say so uh be really cool but they have all kinds of stuff winches um you know all kinds of gear you can add on including even an off-road bumper uh, with recovery points so again you can make these even more rugged than you see here if you'd like so it seems like they're really listening to the off-road crowd really catering to that and I also love how they're really listening to the scout community you know they have some really cool little accents like this uh, little homage to the scout twos with the little uh, light that goes into the fenders there and again, that ghost lighting, especially in those uh, PR pictures, you know, at night looks really, really cool. Now, as far as the powertrain goes, we don't have a ton of info just yet. They just say, obviously, they're both dual motors. Uh, they have an anticipated zero to 60 mile per hour time of three and a half seconds. 
um, and they say that it's this is made possible thanks to a nearly 1,000 pound-feet of torque through the four-wheel drive system. Uh, the other cool thing here is that they are going to have NACS ports uh, right from the beginning here. They're going to be on an 800 volt architecture as well uh, and that allows it to have 350 kilowatt DC fast charging um, which puts it right at the top of the pack as far as you know charging capabilities here um, at least as far as you know the end of 2024 is concerned and um, yeah so it's also going to have bi-directional charging so you can of course power your accessories whenever you're out you know adventuring and uh, able to keep all that stuff going and um, so yeah I mean very, very impressive. And also, if you're wondering about these tires, you know, like I said, 35 on the back of this one. Um, for these, you'll be able to say, they say a 33 underneath the tailgate here, but you have the option to do a 35 in a uh, bed mounted uh, holder there if you would like. And um, again, just great that they're offering this. It's just so cool that Scout is beating, you know, all the major OEMs to the punch of an electric off-roader like this and doing it in a very legit way. And it does have a frunk, as you can see here. So it also has various uh, power outlets in here. You also have even a nice little pressure gauge there and uh, some hidden storage even within the front. So this opens up and you have, it's all nice solid metal too. Nothing flimsy here, uh, nice extra, uh, space in there and uh, you know I mean not quite as large as some of the competitors obviously uh, you do have a decent amount of space up here taken up but you know nice to have you know some hidden space especially for the truck since you know that's one of the big things with trucks is you usually don't have a trunk so it's great that we have this here you even have some fun little cup holders here uh, so it is tailgate ready and here's a better look at that truck bed here which interestingly has this little um, piece there to cover that so it's all nice and flush uh, for loading in stuff or hanging out whatever you want to do and uh, pretty good amount of space in there uh, maybe a little less deep than some others out there but I mean it you know it's a good amount of space and uh, like I said various tie downs you have power outlets and all that in the back there and uh, also fun little design touches you don't even notice until like now like I see the little um, kind of C pillar treatment there by the rear window, which also is a really large rear window. I mean, look at how expansive that is compared to a lot of other, you know, trucks out there, both gas and electric. None of them really have the entire thing being a window like that. It's another kind of cool retro kind of cue that uh, they've, you know, brought into the modern era here in a really good way. So as you can see, they kind of took all the best aspects of, I think, a lot of the competing trucks of having, you know, still the rear mounted spare, but having a traditional tailgate, you know, not a swing arm thing, you have a traditional tailgate, and it also has the split you know feature here so you can sit on the back of here hang out um and you know i think actually a really good idea i'm surprised no one else has thought of this before scout but i'm really glad they thought of this i think it's a really really good way to do that and then you have you know a pretty good amount of space here um you know pretty typical you know, just eyeballing it it's about the same as any other you know mid-size suv but honestly this is a bigger space than i was expecting for the exterior dimensions being you know what they are i thought it'd be a little smaller so this is a really good amount of space here but let's check out the inside all right so the interior of the scout is so cool this is inspired by the scout too they say and i really love the way they did this interior i mean just first off the materials are so cool and uh, I mean I love the combination of this textile with the leather all perforated and the scout badging there um, again this is a concept this looks very production ready so I mean we still have all the like necessary switches and all the practical stuff which makes me think again we're looking at something very close to production but I love this cage cluster I'm unfortunately unable to sit in this vehicle but you can see it's got like the old bar style speedometer like you've seen from again the original scouts and many other you know vintage vehicles that's really cool no one's done it like that before and I love that it's also a nice clean display I am also so thankful we just have a, a driver display since so many other you know competitors and you know other manufacturers just going for not having any kind of display in front of the driver at all I'm really happy we have that um, we also see a nice large screen we don't have any details on any of this stuff just yet um, so I'm not even sure if I had to estimate I'd say that's maybe roughly a 16 inch screen as far as you know uh, diagonally goes but they also haven't been able to confirm whether it's gonna have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto yet so that is to be determined it'd be really nice to see that to be a key differentiator from the Rivians and the Teslas that don't offer that integration uh, but I mean all the switch gear here really 
really nice and high quality. See, again, it's even got like the USB-C jacks, which is why I think this is pretty pretty close to production here. Um, lots of storage space, nice cup holders there. Uh, see, good bin underneath there. The pedals look very cool. And you have a center armrest there that I'm sure has some storage in it as well. You also see we get a lot of sunlight here thanks to this cabana top that they have available on these, which they say their targeting is going to be the largest opening of uh, roof here on an SUV. And um, that's just, you know, really fun. It's, you know, an actual canvas top here that slides back. And uh, other things while we're looking up at the roof, really cool headliner design too. I don't know if we can see this super well or not but it's, it's really cool pattern to it um another signature thing here i think it will be a signature thing for scout is you have a uh, compass hanging from uh the roof there and uh that whole area some extra auxiliary switches up there i'm sure you'll be able to wire into your favorite accessories and and control all that and you also will see this has a driver monitoring sensor so i don't think they've talked about any kind of driver assistance stuff yet but i'm guessing that means they're at least expecting it to be you know level two um if not more than that again we'll have to wait for more details on all that info but coming into the back seat here uh, you can see some cool straps um, for the door there and again just all the the door pulls and everything just very very nice and a good amount of legroom i was kind of worried with how large the trunk area was this would be kind of tight but this is a good amount of space again right in line with other mid-sized regular suvs um and you have their own air vents and usb-c jacks and other controls there for climate and again this really nice seat I just, I really like the way they did it. It definitely gives me a 70s, 80s kind of vibe with the way they kind of did the leather here and the uh, stitching and and just the tufting and everything. It's very, very cool. But my favorite feature, I think, of these is actually here on the truck. Um, so also some cool new finishes we can check out here on, on that as well. But you can see there is a bench seat. They actually did it. They're offering a bench seat this thing. I'm so pumped for the bench seat. And you can actually get that also in the SUV. So both of these have the option for either the console or the bench. It's just so cool to see a modern vehicle with a bench seat like this. I mean, a large bench too, not just like some half done thing like you see in some you know regular pickup trucks, but an actual full be full bench and that's really exciting and you can see when you do have that bench option then this is all wide open under here so a little less storage but you know i believe this does also flip down again i'm not gonna poke around in here too much but um you know you might still have a little bit of console that can flip down there but uh also really cool with this wood you have um that is open pour has a really nice you know like actual rough texture to it very authentic legit feeling and very very cool and uh just visually looks really nice too with this gray and uh lighter gray kind of combo along with that wood um and again you can see the compass here and then this one also has the glass roof option which is another option you get if you don't want the opening roof you can have this glass one that is sealed up and i believe they said it is also a powered um cover for that as well but um yeah let's check out the back seat of the truck here And you can see a good amount of space. It looks like it's just as much as the Traveler. And um, again, I love how open that back glass is. And again, combined with this glass roof and all the glass of this, it's just a very airy feeling that again, is something you really, really don't get in a lot of modern vehicles as well. So I, again, all the right components of the retro, uh, you know, have been tied in here with a lot of the modern, you know, perfectly blended. I think they've really played this well. And um, so, yeah, that is the back seat there. And so overall, um, very impressed with these. The only unfortunate thing is the weight. There's gonna be a little bit of a wait before these are actually available to purchase. So they're saying they're targeting production to begin in uh, 2027, hopefully early 2027 uh, for these. And uh, they also will be built in their factory in South Carolina that uh, is gonna be creating about 4,000 jobs and it's designed and engineered in Michigan. Um, the other really great thing too is that they said that um, they're going to do direct sales. So they will have service centers Centers and they call them scout workshops that can do repairs and all that and they will have retail spaces so you can check one of these out in person and and you know get a feel for them uh, for yourself including test drives um, but you know they're just going to be retail spaces and not actual dealerships so they say if you want to just buy one of these online you can do that it only takes minutes they say and it'll be a nice simple process no 
pricing BS like you see with a lot of the other competing trucks with markups everywhere and, and all that. This is direct to consumer. You know, you buy it from their site and you have, you know, the physical locations if you need them there. And so, anyway, that is uh, all the info we have here on the Scout Traveler and Terra so far. Let me know your thoughts on these in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thank you all very much for watching. If you have any other follow-up questions, I'm more than happy to answer them there in the comments. But anyway, thank you once again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.